Hello and welcome to a brand spanking new super cool playthrough. This time we're doing Baldur's Gate Enhanced Edition Siege of Dragonspear. Or I guess it doesn't say Enhanced Edition. Well, sometimes it does say Enhanced Edition. You'll see in uh, video number two we'll have the logo and all that. And it definitely does say Enhanced Edition there. Regardless of the fact, this is technically simply an expansion or... In modern parlance, DLC for Baldur's Gate Enhanced Edition. But note the presence of Enhanced Edition. For you see, the situation with this expansion, with this DLC, is really wild. Let's see. Let me see here. I, I took down some notes in my handy-dandy notebook. Let me refer to them here. So, this expansion came out a whopping... 18 years after the original game and it is made entirely by as far as i know it's made entirely by the team who created the enhanced edition right so not bioware but beam dog made this expansion siege of dragon spear uh, and i can really only think of one other time that something like that has happened and that's with actually fairly recently with kingdoms of amalur where they put out an expansion like, not 18 years, we're not talking like 18 years, but like, I don't know, 10-ish years, right? But even more interesting than that, what I thought was, so the original came out in 1998, right? Bioware's original Baldur's Gate, the vanilla version and all of that. And then in 2012, the enhanced edition that Beamdog, like, touched up and everything comes out, right? In 2012. But, now you might think, sure, it's weird how the expansion came out so far removed from the original game, but I guess that makes sense. But also, did you know that the expansion came out so far removed from even the original release of the Enhanced Edition? The expansion came out in 2016. That is buck wild to me. Like, about four years after the Enhanced Edition comes out, they put out the expansion, the DLC for it, Siege of Dragonspear, right? And maybe it may be the case that the Black Pits came out in between that. I'm not sure, but either way, it, it makes the situation even more wild. Regardless of that, and regardless of this not being done chronologically or by even the same developers and all of that and apparently when it came out it was met with like mixed reception and you know the case being that hey the different developers they didn't quite have the same degree of quality writing some folks thought as the originals right as the original folks who were at Bioware anyway regardless of all that this bridges a gap in time of the game's time between Baldur's Gate 1 and Baldur's Gate 2, right? So Siege of Dragonspear, if, if you're watching these playthroughs, you want to watch Baldur's Gate Enhanced Edition and then Siege of Dragonspear, because this sort of makes it all make sense. But that said, at the beginning of Siege of Dragonspear, there's a little recap of, of a few things, right? Let me see. Is there anything else I forgot on this? Let's see. Let's see. No, I think that's all. That's all of it. All right, let me close my notebook here. Hopefully we won't need it later. But also, during our old playthrough of Baldur's Gate 1, which we did on um, core core rules, and then we bumped it up to hard difficulty, I'm actually, I have no idea how difficult Siege of Dragonspear will be relative to the original game. Regardless of all that, um, I did actually have saved all of the footage of us having ended our playthrough because immediately upon ending the playthrough, it kicks off Siege of Dragonspear. You don't even opt in. It just instantly begins upon defeating the final boss and all of that and playing the end cutscenes. It immediately goes right into it. And I thought, oh, this will be great to keep like my first time impressions and all of that and reactions and whatnot to everything going on. But as it turns out, of course, <laughs> if you watch this, this fucking stupid ass YouTube channel that I have here, you will know... I, I forgot. <laughs> I forgot a lot of what happened. I forgot a lot of what happened. So thankfully, they've got uh, 
our save as soon as we ended the game. It's called the final save save or something like that. We'll just load that up and we'll watch all the shit again and we'll be ready to fucking go. <laughs> right? So this is Baldur's Gate Enhanced Edition, The Siege of Dragonspear. I hope you enjoy it. Uh, it's, it's a bit of a weird one. I definitely wanted to take a break and not play it immediately after, although that seemed to be what they wanted, right? Given how it immediately starts after after you finish the core game. I did kind of want there to intentionally be a break, and in that break we played Fallout 1. Uh, but I kind of intentionally wanted that there to sort of mimic the reality of there having been a real-life, like, time gap. Obviously... It's a lot shorter than the 18 years <laughs> going on there, or even the four years in between the uh, the Enhanced Edition and the Expansion, right? But still, we have a bit of a time gap, so it's a little bit fun, right? Anyway, let us, with all of that in mind, proceed forward. Let's go into single player here. Let's also see how much I remember of how to play the game. <laughs> all right, there we go, and here we are. Man, we finished it in March. I guess Fallout 1 wasn't really that long. Which also, to be fair, this, especially given that it's an expansion, will be fairly short. Just as well. Alright, here we go. And just as well, first few videos and playthrough, we'll try to keep them a little bit on the shorter side, as per usual. There we go. So this is the end. We'll skip the ending cutscenes and just the beginning ones for Siege of Dread. Oh, God. Right. So we have slain Saravok. And then you get the big reveal that, oh my gosh, there are other siblings that you may have. So we'll skip that. Here's the credits. We'll skip it. Here we go. They should... Fate leads him who follows it, and drags him who resists. Only weeks Pluto? ago, the malevolent Saravok brought the city of Baldur's Gate to the edge of destruction. How did they get the narrator back? Like him are a child of Baal, the dead god of murder. Baal foresaw his own death and sired mortal children in an effort to bring about his return. Saravok intended to become the new lord of murder. You put an end to Saravok's plans and slew your half-brother. With his passing, you became known as the hero of Baldur's Gate. Now, a new threat casts a shadow over the city. A massive army on a holy crusade has thrown the Sword Coast into turmoil. Little is known of the crusade's leader, the charismatic warrior Kalar Argent. Those who follow her revere her as the Shining Lady, but her background and goals are shrouded in mystery. Some say she is divine, a hero sent by the gods to crush evil no matter the cost. Others whisper that she is another spawn of Baal, intent on following the same path as Saravok. Mm, crush evil One no matter the cost. All okay. else is clear. If the Sword Coast is to find any measure of peace, Kalar Argent must be stopped. Okay. Huh. It is interesting that, that we're poised with this person must be stopped, when very well our character's morality could align with that, you know? Sarawak's dead. Everything's a mess. We should have gotten out of the city days ago. No chance of that now. But Corlage knows what she's doing and... Hey, did you hear that? Oh yeah, far more voice acting. We better in this. tell the boss. Come on. Ugh, smells like moldy bones down here. Bones and evil. That is the stench which Minsk sniffs. This chamber well, is secure, here hero. We are in a <laughs> Sorry. Old tomb again. The last of Saravok's followers are down here. According to the Flaming Fist, all you gotta do is find their leader and bring her to justice. So are these the original voice actors and everything? I can't believe that Beamdog was able to, like, wrangle them all up and all that. I guess maybe using the money that they made from... or whatever their cut was from Enhanced Edition? Huh. 
Okay. All right, what do we know of our prey? I'd have an easier time of it if you came with me, Emily. Sounds simple enough, let's get to it. Okay. Hey, Emwyn, why don't you come with? I really want to. I wouldn't be much help, though. Ever since I asked Duke Janath to teach me how to sling spells, she's had me cooped up in the stuffy old library, studying boring books about the weave. She only let me come down here after I promised to bring her any arcane scrolls or tomes I could find. That's unfortunate, but it's probably best to do as Duke Janath says. Tell me what we know of those we hunt. I'm ready to go get, to get started. I'm not even that familiar with Duke Janoth. You know? Is this a name that I should know well? Because I'm not terribly familiar with the, with the ducal hierarchy and all of that, right? I remember Duke Silver something or the other, right? Duke fucking high ho Silver in a way. Something like that, but Janoth, I don't... I guess maybe they weren't that big of a role, right? Eh, I'm sure if it's important, we'll get reminded of it. Anyway, that's unfortunate, but it's probably best to do as the Duke says. Tell me what we know of those we hunt. Oh God, how does dinner here sound? Oh, I don't even remember. She's got like a French accent or something. Ah, fuck, I can't remember. <laughs> I can't believe they didn't get her voice actress back. Jennifer Hale? What was she doing? They weren't able to get Jennifer Hale? In what? 2016? Come on. Was she, well, was she too busy recording Mass Effect or some shit? What was going on in 2016? That was like Mass Effect 2 or 3 around that time, right? I think. Shit. I can't believe that. They got Minsk and Imwin, but not dinner here? Holy shit. All right. <laughs> I don't remember how she sounds. <laughs> they possess evil hearts if they followed Saravok. Their loss will not be a great one. They're mostly mercenaries, led by a wizard named Korlaz. This is her family's tomb. Korlaz. She aided Saravok, and the Grand Dukes want her dead or alive. We'd better be careful. Okay. Sure. So where are we again? We're underneath Baldur's Gate again. Let's see. In a creepy old tomb again. According to the Flaming Fist. Yeah, we're just in a tomb. We don't know exactly where we are. Probably not underneath Baldur's Gate, though. This just seems like it's a run-of-the-mill adventure and then something's going to go awry in the midst of it. And will fling us into the main adventure of this up-and-coming Argent person. All right. We? Will you be joining me? Let's get to it, then. I thought you weren't going to be joining me, anyone. Want to, but won't. My head's so muddled with spells right now, I can barely get my boots on. I'd only cause problems for you down here. Right. Doesn't this acknowledge the fact that Imowen in Baldur's Gate 2, I remember someone writing in about this, that she ends up being multi-classed or something? Right? Like, she has two classes in there. She's, like, thief and mage or something like that. Wizard. Continue. I'll follow behind you with these flaming fists. If you need help with anything, just ask and I'll do what I can. Okay. There's a healer here, too. Talk to her if you need any bandaging. She also knows all about fighting undead. Okay. Well, that's great. Time more to shine on you. Not that you'll need it. Okay. Holy shit. I must find Korlaz and deal with him. Who the fuck is this person? Safana! Oh my gosh, I remember having found this person. I think. Or someone who uses their icon, right? Or I'm tripping major balls. Let's see. Biography? When asked about her past, Safana spins tale upon tale involving fantastic liaisons with pirate captains, nobles, and royalty of all shapes and sizes. The consistent details seem to be that she grew up in the city of Calimport, surrounded by luxury. Her father was a very influential noble. 
And though she could have had anything, she apparently found herself too confined by her father's protective arm. She ran away in her early teens with the help of the first mate of the pirate ship Exesus and remained with the crew for several years as they raided up and down the Sword Coast. Eventually, she tried to manipulate the captain and found herself in a lot of trouble, escaping when the ship was at port in Baldur's Gate. She has many stories of her escapades after that, but if there is a grain of truth in them, you certainly cannot find it. Okay. Chaotic neutral as well. No equipment either? Yeah, just like garbage. Okay. What are you good at? Let's see if I remember what you should be good at as well. <laughs> okay, find traps. Oh god, it's only 25. <laughs> Open locks, it's only 50. Okay, well, that's not good. <laughs> Hopefully, we won't need to do any of that. Okay. Because it just so happened that in our first playthrough, we like kind of happened into using the canonical party. And I just decided to keep it when it was revealed to me. Anyway, let's do a hard save here. Let's see. Oh, look. This was a million years ago. Okay. Starting for real this time. Lol. Okay. Good. Let's take some money. Invitation. A letter. What the hell is all this shit? This is an invitation to the inauguration of the newest Grand Duke of Baldur's Gate. What? This is from before. Isn't it? Because the inauguration is for Saravok. Oh, because did we find this off of Saravok's body? No. No, this is an invitation that we had gotten. Why is it just laying on the ground, though? A letter. Yeah. Why do we just... <laughs> Where are these on the ground here? Oh, that's disturbing. Okay. Is there anyone who can pick these up? Hey, yeah, new person. Pick all this shit up. Wait, your inventory's full? Oh, I haven't selected. There we go. Good. And then... Oh, you can't use it, huh? All right, fair enough. Equip that there. Good. Actually, what are you skilled in? Stats. Oh, shit. Combat skills. Okay. Crossbow, dart, and we've already got Ninjato. Okay. Sure. Butter knife of Baldurun. Yeah, this is all of our old junk. Oh, it's junk from Imowen that we probably had Imowen carrying around. Oh, that's probably it. Okay. Let's see. Oh, God. How do, how do I quick save and quick load in this game? I remember it was different than what I expected way back when. Let's see, assign keys, quick slots, miscellaneous. Oh, Q and L, okay, okay. Q, there we go, great. I've got this. All right, well, oh shit, look at our screen scroll. It's probably fine, I'm just used to Fallout. Okay, should we chat with the healer, though? Maybe. How's all of our stats and everything look? It looks like we're all good in a major way, right? We should be fine. I've got this. Hey, you are healer. more than welcome in my sight. May the morning lord watch over you, my lady. How may I be of service? I require healing. Do you have any advice on dealing with undead? Nothing right now. Do you have any advice? Lesser undead are mindless creatures who blindly follow their master's orders. Cold magic and poison won't hurt them, but spells that are based on fire usually work well. Okay. Oh shit, you actually have a lot to say. Okay. There are three main types of undead. Skeletal, cadaverous, and spectral. Which category would you like to know more about? Wow. How big is this dungeon going to be? I thought this would be a quickie. Alright, tell me about Skeletal Undead. Skeletal Undead are more common than any of the living would like. They're dangerous, but their physicality makes them somewhat easier to deal with than other dead foes. Swords, spears, and arrows do little against them. 
Forsake slashing or piercing weapons for a hammer or a mace, anything with a flat edge, to return them to their graves. Can I tell you anything else about undead? I would like to know more about the cadaverous. Cadaverous undead include go ghouls, zombies, and whites. Stay out of their reach. They are usually slow, but horrifically strong, and their touch drains the life of their victims. Their attacks often spread disease or cause paralysis. I can offer some potions and scrolls that can help alleviate or prevent these effects. That could be useful. Show me what you have for sale. What? I gotta buy them? Okay, what do you got? I can provide healing as well, as well as a few... Uh, I can provide healing as well as a few potions and scrolls if you've the coin. What the fuck? Okay. Oh shit, you do have a lot of good stuff. Oh, I got a key ring. I don't think I had a key ring before, did I? Hmm. Okay. Potion of extra healing. Oh, is this a new item? Because look. This one seems rendered slightly differently. It has a bit more of a pronounced shadow to it. Well, no. It's very similar to the hill giant strength. If anything, it's like a palette swap, huh? Eh, no. I don't know. Okay. Well... Hold up, I want to also learn about the last one. I want to see what you have to say. Do you have any advice? Tell me about Spectral Undead. What can you tell me about them? Spectral Undead are the most dangerous. They're cunning and powerful, and only magic, weapon, or spell can harm them. Many also possess spell-casting abilities. Ghosts, shadows, and wraiths are all spectral undead. Can I tell you anything else about undead? No, I don't need any more information. Shall we continue on? Let's check in with these mercenaries here. Things seem to be going well. Oh, okay. How about you? Mind if I ask you a question? Oh. Sure, go ahead. If questions are the worst I have to deal with from you, I'll be a happy, happy woman. I don't have the time. Sure, go ahead. I was wondering if it's true. You went into the mines in Nashkel and fought demons. Hundreds of demons, they say. All with spiked tails and flaming spears. No demons, only kobolds. Some miners thought they saw demons, but I uncovered the truth. I don't wish to discuss this. Hundreds of demons, nay, thousands. I slew them all and sent them back to the abyss. Anyone who tells you different lies. <laughs> I don't wish to discuss this. <laughs> of course. Another time, my lady. <laughs> okay. Holy shit. Can we interact with this? Oh, we could. Whoa, what happens if I click on it? Don't worry about me. Oh, I inspected. A sturdy rope hanging down into the tomb offers the only viable exit from the house of the dead. Almost out said horse. <laughs> okay. Sure. Where the hell are we? Can I bring up a world map? Oh my god! Am I in Baldur's Gate? Wait, is all of this expansion in Baldur's Gate, actually? Whoa. Huh. No fucking way. Okay. Weird. Sure. Okay. Well, oh, shit. Okay. Here we go. Let's Don't worry out. about me. Let's see if I remember how to play. <laughs> I mean, look at this. This can't be. Oh. You're too late. It's already gone. It's Perios. What are you talking about? Gone? What's gone? What are you prattling on about? You waste the last minutes of your life with idle chatter. I'm coming for you! Gone? What's gone? What are you prattling on about? Aren't you here for his sword? I thought... I've come for Corlaz. If she surrenders, I'll see to it both of you are treated fairly by the Flaming Fist. 
Tell me more about this sword. Why would I want it? And where is it now? You shouldn't think. You're obviously unused to it. <laughs> Jeez. Huh. Tell me more about this sword. Oh shit, Khalid. <laughs> Do I remember how Khalid sounds? <laughs> Sorry, I'm getting into the character. Oh! <laughs> That's me. This is me channeling Khalid. I'm trying. I remember Khalid vaguely. <laughs> I heard that th that Saravak sword has disappeared from the Ducal Palace. Could it be the b blade of which he speaks? I've said too much. All you need know is that not but death awaits you here. Turn back now where you still can. Huh. Okay. I should continue to seek out Korlaz and her followers. Hang on, how do you sound again, Khalid? Oh shit, because I turned off the... What do you call it? Because it annoyed me back in the day. Because we had had it on for so many times. Alright, sell them. You want me? They called. Whoa, is this new shit? Hang on. Let's have it be always. Or maybe I just never heard it. Can I help you? Yes. Huh? M me? P problem? B what is it? C can I help you? I? Yes. You want boo? Yes. Thy demand. Hmm? Nature's servant awaits. All right, that's familiar. Yes, or oh, omnipotent. Um, that's familiar. Too long since Minsk journeyed with such a fine companion. What do you need? Okay. Let's head on out over you here. You want it? You got it. Jesus. Are they gonna, like, fuck around with a bunch of booby traps? Oh! It's a mon! Okay. Hey. What's up with you, Amon? Three drops of lemon balm oil. <laughs> A half pinch of powdered silver. Greetings! Who are you? What are you doing in a tomb full of traps and mercenaries? Oh, it's full of traps. Okay. Great. Well, good thing we have someone who can detect traps very well. <laughs> Thanks, Sarafafalafal. Jeez. If you are Korlaz, I've come for you. If you're one of her followers, you're in my way. Either way, you're my enemy. Who are you? Oh, pardon. I didn't hear you come in. I'm conducting an experiment. Tell me about this experiment. Did you not hear the people playing cards at that table too? They left ra They left recently, by the looks of it. You're one of Korlaz's followers, aren't you? Tell me the truth, now. In a tomb filled with dangerous mercenaries, right. Pull the other leg, lady. What are you up to? Give me a single reason not to slay you where you stand, minion of Korlaz. Make it a good one. Huh. Let's continue being kind of fed up, right? This was the characterization I gave to Lila Schnub in Baldur's Gate 1. A do-gooder, but also kind of fed up and exhausted by everyone's shenanigans. All right. Pull the other leg, lady. What are you up to? Oh, I'm creating an alchemical concoction to reveal magically concealed writings. Uh, a mercenary was supposed to guide me further into the tomb to find the component I'm missing. Oh, God. You're going to want me to do it, huh? Just now, their leader summoned them away, though. She bid me stay here for my own safety. If you happen to come across Cobalt Moss and bring some to me, I'd be truly grateful. Oh, thank goodness. I thought I would have to escort you. Okay. Certainly, I'll keep an eye out for some. Their leader. That would be Korlaz. I would be happy to fetch you some, provided you pay for the service. I've no time to waste running errands for you, old woman. I don't trust you, and I suspect you're really an ally of those who operate out of this tomb. I've no choice but to kill you. <laughs> Jeez. Let's see. Their leader, that would be Korlaz. I believe that is her name, yes. You believe? Either you know her or you don't. 
Your presence here grows more and more suspicious. As long as you're only here for your alchemical component, I have no quarrel with you. If I see some, I'll bring it to you. Stay here and don't interfere with my work. I have important things to accomplish, and they don't involve finding moss for suspicious women. You lie well, but you must be an ally of Korla's. Your treachery will now mean your death. As long as you're only here for your alchemical component, I have no quarrel with you. Oh, thank you. Do come back if you'll find Danny. I should return to Ammon if I find any cobalt moss. Hmm. Okay. Let's see. Oops. Oh dear. I've turned it off. Oh god. How do I turn it all back on? <laughs> oh god. <laughs> Nailed it. Okay. Tell Let's me. See. So Don't what is this? Someone was playing cards in here? There's money. There's a gem bag, which thank goodness, because Imwin had all of our fucking gems! She's got all the gems we had throughout, like, almost the entire fucking game! <laughs> well, hopefully we won't need to buy anything, right? I think we spent almost all of our money, though, toward the end. Right? I think so. Thank goodness. All right. Gem bag. Orders from Corlage. Sweetheart? Right. Let's have Safana come over here. Let's see. Gem bag. Take the gem bag. Check the orders. This missive is dated two days ago. Porius. An open wound in Mother oh. Earth. Right. I would plug it had I the power. I forgot we have to do that in this game. It doesn't auto pause whenever we open. Okay. Porius, gather all of your spare equipment in the supply room. We depart in two days. Since we put Saravak's sword on the ship to Athkatla, a suspiciously high number of people have become aware of this location. We must move quickly before the Flaming Fist arrives. If fortune smiles upon us, we'll be in Zazesper within the week. Signed, Korlaz. Okay. Sure. Let's pop another quick save. Check over here. Got anything in this? History of the North, Volume 1. Oh, look, we can inspect this. Cards lay scattered atop the... across the top of this sarcophagus, apparently abandoned mid-game. Anything else I can inspect? This big pit. Red light glows at the bottom of this deep chasm. A dull and distant roar can be heard from somewhere below. Okay. How about over here? Huh. Identify and protection scroll. Guess we'll take it. The den of stinking evil. Actually, this evil is not as smelly as it usually is. We come for you anyway. Well, scrubbed evil. These are totally new lines just for this? Is that what's going on here? All right, bottle of wine. I think this is new. The label on this wine bottle reads, Marcember Blush Fine Vintage and claims to be a fruity blend of spices and dew flower fragrances. The vineyards of Marsember are well known for their firm grapes, which draw their flavor from the fragrant salt air of the Sea of Fallen Stars. I love dungeons. They're usually Give it to me bursting straight. with gold. You want it? You got it. Okay. <laughs> is Safana from the original game for real? I think she is. Right? Let's see. Should we... Hmm. We do actually have... Yeah, we still have the scroll case on dinner here. Okay. Yeah, we're good. We're good. What do you All need? right. Well, like I said, we'll keep these a little bit short for the first get-goings here. And then we'll proceed into the longer, more usual length of videos that we tend to have. But for now, when next we come back, we will continue with the Siege of Dragonspear. Which is surprisingly in a lot of Baldur's Gate, it seems. Are we actually going to a place called Dragon Spear or are we being sieged by someone with a Dragon Spear? Probably the latter, huh? All right, until next time, please take care of each other.